Remy closed the door behind Aaron and scrutinized him once more. In the dimly lit hallway, he hadn't gotten the full effect of the ridiculousness of the boy's suit. But here in the spacious living room, he could see every gaudy detail. Please sit, he said, more commanding than he'd intended. Despite his years as a commercial pilot, he'd spent more time as a captain in the Navy, and it had done little for his patience or social skills. Can I get you something to drink? He asked, more out of obligation than a real concern. I just started a kettle of tea, or I can get you some coffee if you prefer. Tea is fine. Remy watched Aaron seat himself on the edge of the sofa. He fluffed the pillows closest to him and ran his thin fingers over the heavy stitched embroidery. One thought occurred to Remy as he eyed the younger man inspecting his French imported ceramic tea set. He looks positively outrageous sitting in my living room. Plaid against satin cream, egg yolk yellow against the gold lined duvet, and the grocery store plant he'd gifted next to the polished bronze candlesticks on the coffee table. Aaron crossed his legs and bowed his head as he picked up the art book on Remy's coffee table. He flipped through the pictures for several minutes before he likely grew bored and placed it back on the counter. The kettle whistled and Remy took his time preparing the tea. He was in no rush to interview anyone, but this man, if he was even old enough to be considered, was offensive in a way Remy couldn't explain. How do you take it? He asked, balancing the tea service tray as he walked. Lots of sugar and cream, Aaron scooted to the edge of the sofa to help him unload the tray. Say when. Remy poured the cream steadily until Aaron cheerily piped out, when. After serving Aaron his tea, he prepared his own and sat back in his chair to examine Aaron over the rim of his cup. By the look of him, he was definitely an Omega, even if one ignored the blonde hair framing his sweet face or doughy green eyes shining brightly. One couldn't ignore the vacant expression Aaron wore, or his delicate slim frame spreading out around his hips, or how gracefully he sat, legs crossed demurely as if to preserve his innocence, or those titillating lips kissing the rim of his cup. Titillating? Remy took a long sip of his tea. Certainly Aaron was attractive in the traditional sense, but titillating? In what way? Remy traced the line of Aaron's body taking his time to observe every feature. He was young, much too young to be considered titillating, but Remy could concede that he was indeed supple and personal preferences notwithstanding, beautiful. This tea is very delicious, Aaron suddenly exclaimed, halting Remy's train of thought. Is it peppermint? Yes. I see. Aaron's eyes darted around the room, clearly searching for a new topic of conversation. He was a tiny rabbit looking for a hole to escape in. When he failed to find one, he rebounded to the tea. I personally prefer lemon, he told Remy, but of course chamomile is good before bed, and green tea is. Does my silence offend you, Mr. Holloway? Remy suddenly asked. I'm sorry? Aaron blanched. Silence, Mr. Holloway. Does it offend you? Um, no... As he answered, his lips pouted slightly. You seem unsure. I am a bit, sir, of the question. Remy didn't reply right away, curious to see if Aaron really could control his incessant talking for longer than five seconds. Anna Lee and I live a very quiet life, Mr. Holloway. We spend our afternoons generally reading or watching the television. I work a great deal, you see, and when I am home... I thoroughly enjoy my peace and quiet. The teacup clinked gently when he sat it down. So you see, it's very important to me that whomever I choose for this position is respectful of that lifestyle. I understand. Aaron nodded firmly and sat up a little straighter. For a moment, Remy thought he might have gotten through to Aaron until he said, Although I'm surprised you're able to get any peace and quiet with a five-year-old. Beg your pardon? Remy's gaze hardened. With Anna Lee, I mean, Aaron exclaimed. When I taught at the preschool, they were never quiet. Remy caught the sight of Aaron's fangs when he giggled. They were always talking or laughing or being silly. Well, 
I suppose everyone has their own standards, Remy said, not so slyly alluding to Aaron's earlier behavior. Fortunately, Annalie is a very mature young lady. Certainly, but I'm sure even she acts silly once in a while. Occasionally, yes, Remy asserted. Only occasionally? How sad. Remy shifted uncomfortably in his seat at the pity in Aaron's eyes. Strange, given that Anna Lee sat in the lap of wealth and luxury, the child wanted for nothing. If it was in Remy's power to buy it for her, he didn't hesitate. So you worked at a preschool, Remy asked, forgoing the niceties of small talk. For how long and where? He clicked his pen and grabbed the legal pad laying on the coffee table. All things considered, he was more than qualified for the position. He worked at several preschools and majored in elementary education at CUNY. And when did you graduate? Remy asked him, still scribbling. I haven't. The pen stopped. Remy's eyes darted up from the legal pad and quirked his brow. I had to take a break from school due to some personal issues. For a moment, Remy thought he saw the shadow of a grimace, but it flitted away in the next second. Part of the reason I applied for this job is that I plan to go back to school soon. Seeing as you responded to the job post, I trust you're aware that I am a pilot. I am, Aaron exclaimed. I've never actually met a pilot. It must be exciting flying all over the world and visiting new places. Not as exciting as one would imagine. The truth of it was that Remy found commercial flying dreadfully boring. It wasn't that he missed the danger of fighter jets, but being confined in a box for hours at a time, holding his pee and forcing himself to make small talk, was a different kind of torture. As for the layovers, there was once a time when discovering new places and things excited him. Remy could vividly remember the snow gondola rides under the full moons of Italy, scuba diving with her in the blue-green seas in the Bahamas, baking in the desert sun as they made their trek to the pyramids of Giza, making love to her on the smooth white sand in Madrid, kissing her seemingly above the world at the Eiffel Tower, marrying her next to the rushing falls of Niagara. I promised to show her the world. In any case, Remy ignored the growing pain in his gut. I'll be gone for days, sometimes weeks at a time. The job requires not only looking after Anna Lee, but cooking and light cleaning between the maids' visits as well. I'm well aware, Aaron nodded. And yet you're certain you'll be able to handle all of that and attend uni? I only have one semester left, so it won't be difficult to schedule my classes around your daughter's school schedule. As for the workload, his lips quirked into a smirk. I have a plethora of experience working with children, and I know how to manage my time well. Had it not been for the personal reasons I mentioned, I would have graduated by now. Remy studied him, but found none of the flightiness he'd exhibited earlier. It seemed that Aaron did, in fact, take his work seriously, and judging by his sharp eyes and pursed lips, he intended to make this work. It was rare to find a young person, let alone an Omega, who had a strong work ethic. And despite his initial impression of Aaron, the young man seemed well-rounded enough. However, a truth remained between them, an obstacle that could not be ignored. I just have one more question, Remy folded the tip of his fingers together and asked. Aren't you a little young to be on your own? Chapter 4 I just have one more question. Remy folded the tips of his fingers together and asked. Aren't you a little young to be on your own? I'm 23, sir. Still young for someone like you. Remy ignored the look of surprise on Aaron's face and added, I imagine your father wouldn't approve of you living alone with me. For some reason, Aaron blushed before he said, If this was a romantic arrangement... Perhaps you wouldn't agree, but seeing as you have no intentions of... The Omega's cheeks blushed darker. Of bonding with me, it isn't an issue. It might not be an issue for you, but it certainly is for me. Aaron tilted his head, clearly confused at the implication. You're an Omega. Remy decided to spell it out for him. I am an Alpha. I'm aware of our cast, Mr. Baker, but I don't see why they should matter. Alphas and Omegas work together all the time. Yes, but they don't live under the same roof. The risk is too great. What if you were to go into heat? Aaron's cheeks grew so red, Remy thought he might faint. In retrospect, the question was probably a bit coarse, 
but honestly, Remy couldn't understand what Aaron was thinking. Omegas and Alphas had come a long way from the time of forced bondings and arranged marriages, but some things never changed, and Omega in heat was still as potent as an Alpha in rut, and these things were as inevitable as breathing. I can leave when my heat is due, Aaron offered. I can stay at my sister's. It only lasts for two days. I appreciate your interest, but it simply won't work. Remy stood from his chair, hoping Aaron would take the hint. Now if you excuse me, I... Wait! Annalise's squeaky voice called from upstairs. Mr. Aaron, wait! His daughter rushed past him in a blur, waving a piece of paper into the air. I made you a picture, she told Aaron, pulling the wild strands of hair from her face. My favorite color, Aaron beamed at her, peeking at the picture. Remy could see that it was an exact replica of the flower Aaron was currently wearing in his hair. Here, the Omega unsnapped the clip. This is for you. He slid the sunflower into the front of Annalie's hair and clipped it into place. Now you have a gift from me. Annalie patted the top of her head excitedly. Look at, Papa. Is it pretty? It's beautiful, darling. What do you say to Mr. Aaron? Thank you, Mr. Aaron. You're welcome, Aaron sniggered as he watched her run off. He folded the picture in half and slipped it in his pocket. Well, Remy let out a heavy sigh before he stepped away from the front door. It seems you've made quite the impression on my daughter, Mr. Holloway. It's Rin, Aaron answered flatly. Pardon? My name. Aaron scrunched his face. I wasn't going to say anything until I got the job, but... Since that's off the table, I figured there's no harm in telling you the truth. I prefer Aaron, or Rin, Mr. Baker. Mr. Holloway makes me sound like an old man. Is that so? Remy couldn't help the smirk as he added, Even though you just called me Mr. Baker. Aaron's eyes shot open, and he clasped his hands over his mouth, hiding the red in his cheeks. Then again, I suppose that's fair. I must seem ancient to you. No! Aaron blurted, waving his hands and shaking his head. I didn't mean that. that. That is to say, I'm sure you're not that old. Remy bursts into laughter then, fully exposing his alpha fangs. Aaron, however, looked mortified. I mean, Aaron tried to clean up his mess. You don't look old, but I just assumed because of Annalie that you... Enough. Remy held up his hand to silence Aaron's rambling and take him out of his misery. I've decided to keep you around, Aaron. I'm sorry, Aaron blinked. What? Against my better judgment, I'm hiring you as Annalie's nanny. He schooled his face, and his tone grew more businesslike. I'll give you one month. Consider it a trial run. But if anything goes wrong in that time, anything at all, I'll ask you to leave immediately. Of course, Aaron squeaked and bounced on his tiptoes. I promise, nothing will go wrong. Good, Remy nodded. You can move in right away. I'll need you for my next trip, which is exactly one week away. Oh, thank you, Mr. Baker. Remy's eyes went wide as Aaron practically jumped into his arms. He froze where he stood, muscles tensing as Aaron wrapped his arms around his back and laid his cheek against his chest. I really, really appreciate it. I won't let you down. Aaron's body was just as supple as Remy presumed, warm and intensely delicate. Remy could easily overpower him. And who's to say he wouldn't? Aaron didn't know him. Yet here he was, an Omega, heedlessly bestowing affection. How could a man be so defenseless? Protect him. The thought echoed at the base of his skull. Of course, Remy understood that this little Omega spoke to the plebeian Alpha within him. It was hardwired in Remy's nature to protect, and in his biology to physically desire. The attraction, if he could call it that, was superficial, skin deep. And yet, how long had it been since he held an Omega? How long since he filled his lungs with the luscious aroma of Omega? Too long, Remy decided, and so he indulged. He gave in to the urge he'd had since Aaron entered his territory and leaned down to scent him. For a moment, Remy forgot himself. Aaron smelled unreasonably good, but then, how often did Remy truly take the time to scent his lovers? Alphas and betas were fine for casual sex, 
but an Omega was an Alpha's ingenerate mate. Remy inhaled deeply through his nose and closed his eyes. Aaron smelled like the wild lavender fields of Saudi Arabia, fresh and exotically sweet, with the tangy zest of lemongrass. It made his mouth water, and the tip of his fangs began to ache and tingle, beckoning Remy to answer the call Aaron's body subtly gave him. If he smells this good, I wonder how he'd taste. The thought struck Remy like a fist. His eyes shot open, and he cleared his throat. It only took seconds for Aaron to realize his mistake. Oh my goodness! Aaron unwrapped himself from around Remy and jumped back terrified. I I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to. It's fine. Remy ran his fingers through his sweat-dampened hair, fighting the heat in his groin. I shouldn't have done that, Aaron shook his head. It's just, I'm a hugger, so when I'm happy I just... His voice cracked, and he lowered his head in shame. I'm sorry, Mr. Baker, I, I promise it won't have it again, but I understand if you don't want to hire me. Remy gazed at Aaron, overwhelmed once more by how beautiful he was. Even with the hint of tears in his eyes, he was breathtaking and consequently dangerous. And yet, Remy wasn't so weak to be pulled under by the spell of an Omega. He'd refused countless partners in the years since his wife died. He could certainly refuse Aaron Holloway, right? Right. It's Remy. Aaron peered up at him, green eyes glistening with tears. Excuse me, sir? My name. Remy stood up straighter, attempting to harden his resolve. It's Remy. If you're going to be living here, I won't having you call me sir or mister. Remy reached out his hand for Aaron to shake. It's very nice to meet you, Aaron. Aaron blinked before his face lit up into a wide grin. He clasped both hands around Remy's and squeezed the tips of his fingers. Very nice to meet you too, Remy.